Since Russia went to war with Ukraine, the Kremlin has blocked public access to an unprecedented volume of economic statistics. Those operating outside the government machine have been left working in the dark. It's more likely that the Kremlin is afraid of publishing data that reveal the full scale of the economy's collapse or the extent of monthly spending on the war. Because Russia is bleeding cash at an alarming rate, and reportedly it'll run out of money in the next 18 months. The mainstream media has bought into Putin's words that everything's going well and that the Russian economy is flourishing. But the reality is that he's been manipulating currency rates, cherry-picking data, and hiding key economic statistics. The scale of the deteriorating economic situation was already clear in the data of industrial production released earlier by Russia's state statistics service Vashtat. In comparison to April 2021, Auto manufacturing fell by over 85%, production of elevators by 48%, washing machines by 59%, and refrigerators by 46%. Cars, equipment, and other vehicles made up almost half of Russia's total imports in 2021, while in May 2022, new car sales in Russia plummeted by 83%. And this was all about six months ago, and the economic situation has been crumbling with each passing day. As the U.S. and its allies continue to impose harsh financial sanctions on Russia, the country seems to be nearing a catastrophic financial crisis. The sanctions have targeted oligarchs and banks, the sale of Russian resources, and the flow of capital. Western companies have withdrawn their business. Russian banks have largely been cut off from the global financial system. As a consequence of the Western sanctions, $600 billion of corporate activity has flowed out of Russia which is a clear indication that the Russian economy is headed for a collapse. Now, with foreign sanctions presiding over a plummeting Russian ruble, Russia's economic standing has fallen further still. Russia's economy would be the 22nd largest in the world, with a gross domestic product, or GDP, not much larger than the state of Ohio. That's a far cry from the past when Russia was a true world power. According to the economic historian Angus Madison, it was the fifth largest economy in the world in 1913, behind the United States, China, Germany, and Britain. By 1957, when the USSR outpaced the United States to launch the first satellite into space, the Soviet economy was the world's second largest after America's. Last year, Russia's GDP sat at around $1.7 trillion. However, subsequent to the foreign sanctions, over 1,000 companies have shut down their businesses in Russia. Consequently, 42% of Russia's GDP has flowed out of the country almost overnight. Companies from Apple to ExxonMobil are either exiting or cutting their investments in Russia, adding to the country's economic pain significantly. Russia is full of closed storefronts and deserted shopping malls after firms have suspended operations. There's simply nothing for consumers to buy. And what has been left behind is becoming impossible to buy as prices continue to rise. You can imagine the situation by the fact that it's almost impossible to get pasta and sugar now. Paper has become a luxury commodity. The price of wrapping paper has quadrupled. Look at this IKEA building. The entire area is now empty. Making a permanent cut to its business in Russia, IKEA had to say goodbye to around 10,000 retail employees in IKEA's Russian stores. Closure of businesses is affecting the Russian labor market severely. Reportedly, around 2 million people are likely to lose their jobs, and unemployment is expected to rise from 4.4% to 7.8%. Massive layoffs and surging prices are pushing consumer spending down to new levels. So, when the war is being dragged into the winter, the economic repercussions on the Russian economy are becoming clearer. But if you're listening to Putin, don't worry, everything's going well, in his words. Russia's propaganda machine is also persuading many Western analysts that sanction measures have been a failure. However, a range of Russian sources tell a different story and reveal the broad extent of the impact. Russia's economy is ill-equipped to address the challenges created by international sanctions. 
It is increasingly state-controlled, particularly by Putin's close associates. It's also concentrated in a few regions and conglomerates, heavily dependent on technology imports and massively corrupt. Russia's state sector, like China's, is notoriously inefficient because of significant subsidies and cheap credit. The notorious inefficiency of state-owned enterprises is exacerbated by many of them being controlled by people who worked with Putin in St. Petersburg in the 1990s. Putin has been deceiving the world by manipulating the economic data of Russia. Concealing stats in an attempt to keep Washington and Brussels in the dark so that they'll have less visibility on whether and how their sanctions are biting into the Russian economy, making it more challenging to find new targets and fine-tune future sanctions rounds. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development has already projected that the Russian economy will shrink over 10% which would still constitute the country's deepest recession for over 30 years. Similarly, Goldman Sachs has also forecasted a 10% contraction in the Russian economy, while the Institute for International Finance think tank has projected a more damaging 15% plunge in Russian GDP. With a steep decline in GDP, independent economists are foreseeing a prolonged period of negligible growth in the Russian economy. Putin has suppressed and hidden important economic statistics from the public. Based on the past few centuries of ruthless dictators, it's completely nonsensical to trust propaganda from a country at war. Professor at Yale School of Management Jeffrey Sonnenfeld has uncovered the truth about Russia's economy by using direct data sources, data mining of shipping data, and cross-channel checks. According to his revelation, it is an embarrassing moment for Russia that Putin has manipulated the standard macroeconomic national income statistics, the energy stats, imports and exports, transportation data, including airline flows and passenger traffic, central bank standing, the performance of major Russian firms, which was supposedly being reported on a monthly basis. Like any other democracy, freedom of speech is the fundamental right of every citizen. But freedom of speech has become a crime in Russia. Russia is forcefully curbing each voice that is dissatisfied with the ongoing economic crisis or even mildly critical of Russia's foreign policy. Russia has clamped down harder on news and free speech than at any other time in President Putin's 22 years in power, blocking access to Facebook and major foreign news outlets. Putin has signed a law that effectively criminalizes any public opposition or to independent news reporting about the war against Ukraine. The punishment in such cases could go up to 15 years in prison. Fearing prosecution, more independent Russian news outlets have shut down their operations in the country, including the BBC, which had suspended all of its operations countrywide. The major reason behind the ongoing crackdown is that the Kremlin attempted to contain discontent over the war and to control the narrative spreading as a result of the severe economic crisis. The Russian government is treating the protesters like animals. Police are torturing anti-war and economically depressed activists badly. Protesters standing up against the war, layoffs, and skyrocketing inflation are horrifically being manhandled by the authorities. More than 13,000 protesters were arrested after anti-war protests broke out by the Russian authorities. Many of them have been detained and accused of criminal charges. A Russian journalist was fined around 30,000 rubles after the live broadcast protest. Later, she was also placed under house arrest and imprisonment for up to 10 years under the new law. As Russia's economy has sunk and the fear of prosecution is increasing, high net worth individuals are leaving the country. According to reports, around 15,000 millionaires are expected to leave Russia in the next few months. These 15,000 constitute roughly 15% 15 of the total millionaire population of Russia. Russia is also facing massive supply shortages due to sanctions on different items exported to Russia from Europe and Asia. Even though the necessary equipment for the military is now not available. For instance, Russia is facing a semiconductor chip shortage for missiles and other munitions. Even the semiconductor failures from China to Russia have increased by 1900% in recent months. According to reports, before the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, the defect rate in imported silicone was 2%. 
With the beginning of the aggression, Russian manufacturers apparently faced a 40% defect rate. The U.S. military found that for military equipment, Russia has been using semiconductors from dishwashers and refrigerators. So far, Russia has tried to reduce this issue with unauthorized imports, but that hasn't worked out. Through the gray market, Russia is attempting to make up for its lack of imports. Parallel imports into Russia are expected to hit $16 billion. According to Yale professor Jeff Sonnenfeld, total imports are down by 60%, making $150 billion, which means that parallel imports have only made up for roughly 10% of the imports that Russia lost. While some argue Russia can do business with China, Chinese exports to Russia are also down substantially because Chinese companies are worried about secondary sanctions, because the U.S. is also cutting off ties with Chinese companies doing business with Russia. Now, the Chinese companies are scared of being penalized by these secondary sanctions, which are severely hurting Russia's imports from China. The implication of Russia's import shortage is a severe inflationary crisis. The inflation rate of Russia's currency, the ruble, is currently at over 15% year over year, according to Russia's central bank, which has plenty of incentives to lie about the inflation rate. Jeffrey Sonnenfeld found the inflation rate to be between 20 to 60%, depending on the sector. Meanwhile, the Russian currency crisis is awful, and Russia is losing money, which is a more pressing concern. 